This is the 217 Recovery Podcast with Corey Winfield. You know, when people like reach out and ask for help and it's something as simple as, hey, you're shipping her a box of tampons. The one thing about this girl is she's never asked me for anything. She may have hinted about tampons. It is the 22nd of November, 2022. My name is Corey Winfield. This is the 217 Recovery Podcast. And to hear the latest tampon news today, I guess, Tampax or whatever, on their social, they sent out a message saying, it's kind of gross, really. It said, guys, you try to be, you try to get in their DMs but we're in them or something like that. You know, it was like, wait, what? Like to me, that seems like it was written by a man and not really toward their target demo. I think there's a lot of backfire that happened on. I know a lot of people were upset and some people were saying, look, I I know guys that you want to act like everybody's, uh, you know, 22 year old hot female, but there's 13 year old girls out there, you know, now, replace that with that and say that again and see how yeah it's bad so they're taking some flack so i figure hey i'm doing the podcast tonight by myself and we had a little tampon talk there glad we can move on uh we <laughs> talked at a treatment center tonight the local one in town and i feel bad for my man justin i figured i'd apologize publicly to him right now and it's weird because and the reason why i'm apologizing i'll get to in a minute but before i went I, I told Marnie, and I was like, you know, I think this is great that Justin goes because it gives him a chance to talk in front of people. You know, and it's something that first time you talk in front of people, you, some people get nervous. You know, I think that's a normal thing. But after a while, you just get used to it and you just, and it just becomes second nature, really. So Justin goes tonight, and I'm just on one. And next thing I know, the hour's up, and I, haven't let Justin talk at all. So I feel bad for him. He just pretty much came and watched me just rant and rave and talk. So sorry, Justin, I feel bad, bro. But I told him next week, the floor is his. So I better be good, Justin. Now, some of the things though, that I was dealing with today are things that I could have controlled and give you some detail on this. Spreaker, who we've been with since the beginning, you know, back in 2019. Actually, I think I was a member of Spreaker back in 2013, you know, something like that. Maybe, yeah, 2014, maybe I got on Spreaker. My friend um, Ed, his wife Maria told me about, oh, Spreaker. And so I became a member of Spreaker, but it was free. It's like a free account, never really used it. And then we started doing podcasts. So we started using them. Then we started paying them and we kept getting a different platform, you know, because I think at first we could only record like 15 minute episodes and that it was perfect until we started talking more than 15 minutes and then it became like, okay, we need more time. And then once we started building episodes, it was like, okay, we need more space. And we got on this other um, membership plan that was quite expensive, but not at first because I think first when we signed up for their expensive plan, it was like a black Friday sale. So we got a huge discount. Well, now that we're a customer and we've been a good customer, they don't reward us for that. So last year it just got taken out of our account, you know, like boom, like almost 600 bucks. I'm like, whoa, didn't see that coming. How do you have our account info? You know, I thought you had two cards ago. And so I reached out to them and said, look, you know, do you guys offer any nonprofit stuff? They say, no. I said, okay, well, anybody discounts? Nope can't offer a discount because you're a member. I said, well, shouldn't you reward the members? You know, I think the phone plans, I I think a lot of phone plans have switched that now, but it's like, wait a minute, you're going to reward new customers, but not the ones you have now. Like what's up with that? Like you should be rewarding, rewarding the ones that you have now, you know? And they're like, nope. So I said, okay, well, we'll just have to let it end. You know, we'll, we'll let our membership end on the 21st and I'll holla at you when I see some good Black Friday deals, you know. If not, then we're going to go with another company called RSS.com. 
And same thing with the website. You know, we have an app that has a website that goes with it. So it's kind of like a free website where the website is like 400 bucks a year, you know, and it's like, well, which one are we going to do? You know, and might as well go with the one we're already paying for. And I know our credit card expired, you know, with the, the year. So I thought, okay, well, they don't have any of that info. Thought same thing with, with Spreaker and we good to go. And then I go check the account today to figure out what we're going to do with that. And I realized both of them have already auto drafted out. And I talked to the guy that we have our app through and he's like, oh man, you know, you should reach out to him and, and, and reverse that payment. And like Spreaker, they're not easy to work with. I don't recommend using them if you're podcasting. It's just my personal opinion. And I said, look, dude, if I reach out to those people now, because they have like a stupid, like no refunds policy, same thing with the website, the Wix people, all that's going to do is going to get me fired up. It's going to make me even more mad than I am right now. And that's not good for my recovery. And he wrote me back and he's like, yeah, yeah, I get it, man. Like, those are the things you got to watch out for, huh? So, yep, those are the things. Like, I could call a spade a spade and go, well, next time, this year, next year, I better be on it. I better make sure that there's no auto draft on there, that they're going to just take it out of our account. That's what I can control right now. We had the money in there, but we also had to take our vehicle in to get it fixed. And, and thanks again to Breaking Alignment Plus another vehicle problem and then you know when we use our vehicle to take people to and from treatment you know that's that's our office you know so we have to make sure that that's good and there's no check engine lights on and everything's tip top you know but it would have been nice <laughs> you know to, to have a little bit more more money in there till we could feel comfortable for our um auto insurance to come out next month but it is what it is man um I was listening to Steve Harvey. I have his book Jump on Audible. I was listening to that, which is a good good book. And he, everything happens for a reason. That's what I really do believe. And I think it was meant for me to be in the car playing that the other day, coming back from the UP, the Upper Peninsula in Michigan, for those people who don't know. Because it was like a three-hour drive, and I got to listen to it all, and... It's a book that I read years ago, but in there he said, he was talking about his mishap when he crowned Miss Columbia, Miss Universe, when it was really Miss Philippines and they had to come back out and he was talking about that mishap and how everybody was reaching out to him like, Hey, come on, come on our show and, and you can uh, tell your side of the story and what happened and this and that. And he said in those moments of devastation in those moments of craziness sometimes it's best to just be quiet just relax because there's a lot of things right now that I'm absolutely worried about but me running around being crazy is it's not going to help that you know what I'm saying like it's not it's not going to help the situation. It's just going to make me look foolish. So as, as, <laughs> as worked up inside as I am and, and mentally sometimes, I just have to realize, you know what? God's got this. Everything's happening for a reason. You know, I really do trust God, and I, I believe that it's all going to work out how it's supposed to. Is it all going to go your way? No. It's not all going to go my way every time. I can only do what I can do, you know, I can only control what I can control. And if I can do that as much as I can, you know, and not really control, but how can I set myself up for more success, you know, for, for obtaining the goals that I have, you know, reaching those goals, how can I do that? You know, and if I can do a little bit better today than yesterday, then I'm going somewhere. You add that up over 365 days, that's a lot better. And add that up two years, three years, four years, you know, coming up on four years clean. I was telling that to the guys at the treatment center today about how I have to buy a four year coin 
for my mom because I give her the coins. It, it's kind of a cool thing to do, you know, like that first it was every month I was giving her a coin. Now she's got to wait a whole year. I know I'm so selfish, <laughs> but it, it's cool to know that this is a good time of year for me. You know, this is, this is something that I really look forward to, you know, buying her a coin and I, I wish there was more of them that I, that I could buy her, but you know, I have to wait to, to get this four year coin, then to get the five year coin. So that works. But with the things that are going on today, though, sometimes I just have to slow it down and just remember, you know, like, don't go running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You know, like, I get it. The squeaky, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. But at the same time, you know, I can't make myself look foolish and I, I can't run around making a scene about something that I have no control over. And I hope, hope this is all making sense to somebody. If not, hey, sorry, I'll tell some jokes in a minute. But that's just something I was going through today. And I was having a really, not a hard time, but it just beating myself up. You know, it's kind of those relationships that I used to get into. And I'd realize that I shouldn't be in them. And then I'd kick myself for being in them. And it's like, well, what can you do to avoid that next time? You know, you can look at those red flags and go, nope, not, no, nope, nope. Maybe mom was right this time, you know. Like th That's what I can do. You know, so like I said, I can beat myself up for, oh, I didn't take that. I didn't go take those extra steps to make sure that the auto draft stuff wasn't set up. That's what I can do next time. You know, can I write Spreaker and write the Wix people and say, hey, hold on. We weren't going to go with you anymore. Give us our money back. I could. Um, I would have to set the expectations pretty low. Because like I said, when they come back with, no, we have a no return policy, no refunds, blah, blah, blah. Who knows what they're going to say? I'd have to brace myself and prepare myself for the worst on that. You know, maybe I can send an email. Maybe I still will. But I have to know that when they come back with, something stupid or something that to me is unacceptable, then I have to be ready for that because it's stuff like that, that especially early, early on in recovery, if you don't prepare yourself or, or you start picking battles or, or these wars with people that you in stuff that you have no control over, you know, it, it, it can be a setup for failure. You know, it can definitely be a setup for relapse because in early recovery, we're still trying to figure it out, man. And, the thing that we know how to do is to do drugs. <laughs> you know, like when we're feeling bad, we feel shitty about something. Stuff doesn't go our way. We find it unacceptable. We drink. We use. That's what we do. So if you're not grounded enough, you know, you can easily get in those fights every single day. You know, coworkers, your boss, bills, cable company, cell phone company. All kinds of things can get you fired up, man. And how much control do you really have over that? And yeah, this time it didn't go my way. We didn't overdraft or anything. So that's good. But at the end of the day, the only thing I can do 100% is set it up for there's no more auto draft. You know, if I have to physically cancel it, then I will. You know, that's what I, I can control. And to kick myself and say, oh, I'm so stupid. I should have done that better. Oh, I should have been on that. Well, yeah. I should have. But going forward, what can I do? You know, I still don't have the time machine. So I can't go back and change everything. So just little little things like that that'll get you through a day, you know. And, and the old gratitude list, too. You know, I, I'm thankful that. You know, we did have the funds in there and that I got, I don't want to say rich people problems, but there are people out there with a million other problems than that. But it's just one of those things, man, where you have to be, you have to be ready and you have to be in the now, I guess you can say. But that's all I can do, man. That's all I can do. And be thankful for what I do have and, and Thanksgiving's coming up 
And here's here's something I have an issue with. I was going to talk. Maybe I'll wait. Talk with Marnie about it. Because I would love to hear her take on it. But it kind of worries me. All right, I'll talk about it now. Just you and I. My my nephew, um, Aiden, he's seven. I see a picture on Facebook. And he's got this dead deer in his lap. And I thought, oh, okay, he must be with, you know, his dad. And his dad shot a deer or something. And then it said, I think it was from my mom. Oh, my grandson shot a deer with his crossbow. Huh. He's seven. Okay. And this is Michigan. I don't know how other states roll or other countries roll. But here, I guess when you're seven, you can shoot a crossbow and kill a deer. Now... Keep in mind that we just had a big snowstorm here the other day, and when in the snows, I like to drive in it. So we went to the store and we bought some Christmas presents, right? Well, at the store, I'm looking at this. Um, it's like one of those balls that you see at like the museums, where where if you touch the ball, it has like the static electricity that you know what I'm talking about. Those balls, yeah. And it was right in the price range. For my nephews, I have three nephews. I thought, oh, this would be cool. You know, one nephew is 11, the other ones are, are seven. They're twins. But then on the box, it says ages 14 and up. And I thought, well, I could probably get one for the 11 year old. I don't think it would be too damaging for him. But the seven year olds, <laughs> I better not. <laughs> Now, let's rewind that back to the killing deer story. <laughs> so, hold on a minute. So, uh, you see, see where I'm going with this? Like, the seven-year-old can shoot a deer, which I'm sure, like, back in 1862 when people needed to eat, you know, they didn't have the grocery store around the corner. That was probably handy, you know, but, like, why can't I buy him this game <laughs> or this ball of electricity like that's dangerous for him that's that's why they put it on there like somebody went through and said nah eight year old mm -mm. 10 no 11 mm -mm. I better put 14 on there but a seven year old can have a crossbow and shoot a deer now there's a lot of people that are probably big fans of hunting they're like Corey shut up I'm not saying anything bad about hunting. I'm just saying maybe we need to lower the age on those balls or something because it just doesn't make sense to me. Something there just is not making sense. Next time you're in a store, start looking at ages on games and whatever, toys, and then think to yourself, crossbow seven. You'll see what I'm talking about. If you don't understand what I'm talking about right now, do that and you will. You'll be like, wait, this card game probably shouldn't get that for a, for an eight-year-old it says 12 and up it's a match game <laughs> hell even like cards against humanity or what's what's there's that dirty one I don't, see this is why i wish marnie was here i think she'd probably know what it is you know what i'm talking about the, the game where it's like dirty <sighs> whatever taboo is that it no sex Something, something sex or something sexes. Battle of the sexes? No. Apples to, or, apples to apples? But like the dirty version of that, I think. Anyway, just think about it. And you'll be on my team with that. <laughs> anyway, um, not, a, not a super long podcast tonight, but I just wanted to get one in. And my man Adam was supposed to join me on Discord. I put it out there on Facebook. If, if you ever want to join us on Discord... Uh, you can be on the podcast. You can tell your story, you know, but Adam, I don't know. He got busy or something, but yeah, I appreciate you listening and we will do an episode either from the road on Thanksgiving or maybe the day after Thanksgiving. I'm not sure, but our plan is to stay sober through the holidays and hopefully that, that works for you as well. Enjoy your family, make the memories, create some memories, you know, some real fun ones. And I'll talk to you after the holiday or maybe during 
Thanks for listening to the 217 Recovery Podcast. For more episodes plus bonus features, download the 217 Recovery app and support recovery by rating us in the app store.